What's up guys, it's Josh, and welcome to my first YouTube video. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about self-programming. It's always good to go into the gym um, with a plan, uh, with an idea of what you're going to do, and uh, this type of programming can be good for bodybuilders, athletes, powerlifters, just anybody with a general basis or strength goal. Uh, I know gyms are closed where everyone's at, but um, I know in Colorado at least they're going to be opening up soon. So hopefully where you're at, they will also be opening up soon. Before we get into things, uh, I just want to bring up um, my personal fitness journey. All right, starting off with the first picture that I have, um, I never really had my parents take any pictures of me without my sh shirt on or anything when I was younger. So this is the best I got. And I know it's not much, but still, when you look at me, it's also not much from there. Um, definitely a lot smaller in my face and arms and stuff. So moving on. This picture was taken about a year-ish into training. Um, Obviously, my diet was not a priority of mine. Uh, you can tell from the uh, dad bod. Um, there definitely were gains, um, but not as much as I liked. Moving on to my current physique, uh, definitely diet has been a priority of mine. Um, and with any sort of training with anybody, Diet is 80 to 90% of your physique and your health, so always keep that in check. I've also got my training down, figured out exactly what I wanna do, and that's also why I want to share some of the tips that I have learned personally um, with you guys today. All right, first thing we're gonna talk about today is hypertrophy. And hypertrophy is basically the, how I've been explained to it before, like the bottom of a pyramid, that foundation that every athlete, bodybuilder, powerlifter needs in order to grow from there. And hopefully everybody knows what hypertrophy is, but just a little simple explanation is whenever you lift weights, you damage your muscles, and the next time, with enough nutrients and nutrition, they grow back stronger, if you get enough recovery. The main driving force of hypertrophy is volume. Volume is classified as sets, and reps times weight. So if you do five sets of 10 reps with 100 pounds, it's around like 5,000 tonnage and that's your overall volume for like that exercise. Um, <clears throat> it's definitely not necessary to keep track of stuff like that, but that's just a general formula for what volume is. So in order to increase hypertrophy, you wanna start at a lower, um, lower amount of sets and then you want to increase volume weekly. Um, and this would go as like 10 to 25 working sets per muscle group. So if I do 10 sets for my chest the first week, I want to do 12 to 15 sets the next week on my chest and keep increasing that week by week. So one thing to prioritize in volume training is the compound movements. Uh, compound movements, mean that they hit more than one muscle group when you're working them. Um, and you usually want to stick around six to 10 reps for each of these because you do want to have just a general strength basis and get stronger in these compound movements because that will actually drive up hy hypertrophy. Um, then with your accessory movements, you want to stick around eight to 15 reps and anything that's more of like an isolation movement like chest flies, tricep pushdowns, bicep curls, those are all um, accessory movements that can be added on. So a big thing about um, hypertrophy is also going until failure. Uh, fail that has been debated with a lot of different scientific studies, um, but most of them seem to conclude that going to failure, not on every set, but on finishing sets and as like a finisher, adding that in is actually really good and stimulates a lot of muscle growth. Um, I wouldn't recommend going to failure on a lot of compound movements because that can be really dangerous. Um, but there are like intensity techniques and certain things that you can do to increase fatigue and drive to that um, failing point. 
and you usually want to like hit failure on a lot of your accessory movements. Um, not on all of them, but like every two or three. Moving on to splits and frequency. Upper, lower, and full body, they tend to be more of um, a beginner sort of split, I would say. Uh, for me, I actually just started only doing abs, and this was, God, three, four years ago. All I did was just abs all the time because that's all I wanted to look better was that. And they didn't actually even end up showing because of my diet, but that's a video for another time. But um, anyways, I have tried full body. I haven't really delved too much into the upper lower, but usually with upper lower, you do around two to four days. Um, like upper on Monday, lower Tuesday, Wednesday off, upper Thursday, and lower Friday, and upper body, lower body. Um, full body can be three to four times a week, and then it can be focused on different um, muscle groups, like four times a week, you can be focused on your chest one, one day, more focused on your back another day, and then your quads, and then your hamstrings, or just your legs if you're doing um, three, three times a week. So moving on to the more advanced kind of splits, which both are around five to six days a week, push-pull legs I have ran and it's, it's good. It works well because it works all of your muscle groups in one day. Um, but there is more of a likelihood for getting injured with that. If you stick and you just hammer a bunch of chest and then move into shoulders and then do your triceps, um, I know as a former baseball player, um, doing that really hurt my shoulders. So you just kind of got to be careful with that. And if your body can handle it, then you should have no problems. Agonist antagonist. This is by far my favorite split. Why? Because when you do chest and back, that pump that you get is uncomparable to any sort of pump you will ever get in your entire life. Chest and back, arms and shoulders, and legs is usually how you structure that, and then you can hit that five to six times a week. That split for me, and um, I know I've heard a lot of other bodybuilders doing that, even Arnold Schwarzenegger talks about doing that, um, is really, really, really good for muscle growth. Really good. Um, it is more advanced, so you will have to think about like um, what compound movements to put after each other and how to eat your fatiguing and stuff like that. But that split's awesome. <laughs> now, moving on to programming. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the number one thing that you want to program first are your compound movements. You want to make sure your strength is there in the beginning. You hammer those compound movements and then you move on to your accessory movements, which you just basically fatigue the muscle. You can take it to failure if you want. You, per you do not have to. So as I was mentioning earlier, volume can go, it goes up week by week and you're like, hey man, like, when does it stop? Do I just keep going until I just die? No. What happens is, every three to six weeks, whenever you're feeling it in that time period, you take a deloading week. A deloading week means you basically just bring it back to week one. And um, you can keep like cycling that and just keep doing that with the same split, or you can actually switch up splits, which is what I know a couple friends personally do. They will do push-pull legs for one month, and then after that, they will um, change it back and go to agonist antagonist for another month. I recently just started getting into power building, which I can make a different video about power building and my splits and everything, um, and what I'm currently going through. But it's a mixture of strength and hypertrophy. And personally, I found a lot more fun trying to put weight, like it, like weightlifting in my training, being a lot more fun trying to put weight on the bar. So now let's get into the fun stuff. Hey guys, future Josh here. Uh, going over the footage, it seemed to be um, just a little bit longer than expected. So I'm going to make it into two parts. The strength part should be coming within the next few days. So stay tuned.
Yes, sir. 